I understand because they want to understand what's going on there. It's a, it's a big thing. You saw the numbers here on the uh, screen. It's a big thing. But I think after a while, they'll, 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 find, they'll realize that uh, the investors will realize that uh, VC is a contact sport, right? You, you can't do telepresence, at least in the earlier stage. You, you've got to understand the market, you've got to understand the folks there, you've got to understand people's reputations, etc. And it's a full-time job here, right? Why won't it be a full-time job elsewhere? Okay. Um, and I think uh, if they are serious about Southeast Asia, uh, they'll open up an office there uh, and hire people. That, that's my, my perspective. Yeah, but what do you tell the entrepreneurs? The entrepreneurs? Um, the chances of you getting funded by these guys are very, very slim. Yeah, and because you, you might be the one that they invest in uh, to just try out, but, you know. So I have a few friends in Singapore who are founders and they, they wanted to basically come to the Valley to raise money. And so they're like, hey, you're from the Valley, can you tell me about raising money in the Valley? Um, and my question to them is, why? What, like, why are you doing that? There's like plenty of money in Southeast Asia. Like, there's money like everywhere. Like, why do you want to come to the Valley and raise money? And you know, they they give me some answer that I don't really believe. And if I push it more, they basically are like, oh, they want to come to raise money from the Valley because it's like brand name VCs. It's like, oh, I want to raise from Sequoia and all of these guys, right? And I tell them, I was like, look, it like, doesn't matter. Like, a like these guys probably don't know enough about Southeast Asia to really kind of like do good diligence on these deals and all that kind of stuff. And two, like, I don't feel like you should just be like chasing brand names, like coming all the way to the Valley, spending all of that time to chase kind of like brand names. There's like good VCs and there's plenty of money in Southeast Asia. Um, so at least my stance, which again, like I'm just moving there, but it's like, why do you want to do that? Like what is your motivation for like wanting to raise money specifically from the Valley? So <clears throat> a little bit of a background, two of my partners are very successful entrepreneurs in Indonesia already. So for me, but right now I'm also, to answer that, I, I think I do have some background knowledge to check, double check back on, not just me myself doing all this on my own. But when you ask about hiring and stuff, I do face challenges. First, I still don't speak Bahasa, right? So that's this kind of trust building kind of thing. Some people are more open when they speak their own language, right? They speak Bahasa, they're more open. Like when I go into your customer, I ask something, it's like nice, and then I ask my, my team to ask them, and they're like, ooh, it's like, oh, that's a lot of feedback, <laughs> all right? Um, something like that, and, but I do, do, do push the team to, to kind of accommodate me in a way. They have to speak English, they have to use English in a way as the way to communicate. Um, and challenge, there are certain things that also culturally I'm not aware of. One is because I also not, have not lived in Indonesia, but I've probably not been aware of a lot of things in Thailand either because I'm too Americanized also, right? So there will always be some push back and forth. It's a challenge, but at the same time, it's also taught me to be more careful. At the same time, I also teach that to other team members. That's like, we do that because that is the local culture. But here at Kulina, we do this differently, not because, you know, to do it my way, but this is how startup should work. This is how it should work at my and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's a lot of challenges, but I think it's also quite a lot of learning opportunities, and, and that's what I'm looking for. It is almost impossible to crank up in a uh, geography if you have no local expertise. Uh, so, I, if, if someone says my uh, market is uh, Indonesia and and the, there are almost no products I can think of that is devoid of cultural and, and local social biases. Right? So I, I would almost uh, re require a local partner or co-founder to be there. Uh, um, and one of the things you learn about cultural adaptability is, is humility. Right? Don't be so arrogant as you think. People growing up in that society have no advantage over it what you, you can bring to the table. Of course they do, right? And so how do you work with that? The, the trick though, um, are some of the teams, um, I know a few companies, they build up their network here, 
So there's a tie, there's a, you know, either they're in business schools or they, they work together. Uh, they build up their networks, there's a Thai, there's a Indonesian, there's a Filipino, there might be a Malaysian. And then they go out, they go back out there and they go boom. Right? They just start a company and that's multi, uh, multi-city. I've seen that done a couple of times. It's like interview, an interview for a job, right? You look at them, you see what they're contributing, you have a conversation. You see where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, and can you fulfill that? And that's my philosophy for not just, you know, not just doing partnership, but also like investors, like um, recruiting. Right? You have to find someone who can fill up things that you're not good at. I, f- I feel like every, anything I start over there is like a new market to me. Um, and so I think the first thing that I did was partner with local people, like they're suggesting. So, uh, and they are oftentimes my like interface with like the community in Singapore kind of like as a whole. Uh, and I mean, I'd, li- I'd like to get to the point where like I can also kind of like interface, but I think in the beginning it's faster. They just have, it's like they have so much like cultural knowledge that ends up just showing up in all kinds of like small places. The engaging a first business partner I found very important is to do, and it's not very hard to do, a lot of due diligence on reputation through references and just talking to a lot of people about these partners. Right. So it's very easy, but people tend to neglect because they get excited about people who are willing to partner with you. That's the first thing. The second thing with respect to um, going to market in general, where partners are absolutely necessary, in which case I think we kind of agree that partners are in Southeast Asia, you have to tell yourself, determine for yourself, what is the minimum um, level of existence you want your product to have in the market for purposes of that period or your strategy and what is the optimal and if the minimum is good enough for you for that go-to-market strategy at least for, say for the first six months or 12 months um, how can you achieve that with you know with less risk in terms of the types of partnerships you're looking for uh, 